When we first looked at it on x-ray, it was something that we thought, we can pin that. It was a very big, very clean break. Both the humerus and the ulna just boom, just off the side, completely broke in half. We knew going into the surgery that if the bone was too far gone, that the bird met the criteria as an ed bird. And so we would continue on with an amputation and hopefully uh, have that bird become an educational bird for somebody in the country. So I do think we are going to amputate here because yeah. my worry is the necrosis on that with bone. all the necrosis and whatnot that we'd just be fighting infection the entire time if we tried to pin it. We then started to prep the bird for surgery. We had to start pulling feathers around the surgical site, which is super intense. I mean, they're a huge bird with really tough feathers. And pulling on that uh, just felt really strange. Give some lift. But once we got into the surgery, uh, you know, everything went pretty smooth. Uh, the biggest question mark we had was running anesthesia on a golden eagle. Uh, there's not a lot of data out there. It was stressful. It was a lot of a guessing game and a lot of just working by feel, watching breaths, listening to heart rate. You know, I was holding feet. Uh, we had another technician running anesthesia, monitoring respirations and heart rate. Surgeon was working and we thought, we had it in the bag. I mean, it, the surgery went really well. We amputated right at the, uh, what would be the elbow joint in humans, closed that up with some of sutures that'll fall out here in, um, in a few months. Uh, but uh, everything went well so far, so we'll see if he recovers good here and go from there. We brought the bird out, got everything all wrapped up, buttoned up, and I was actually putting the bird back into the crate for transport, and I felt the bird shudder. I knew that was a bad, bad sign. Dr. Cook got down there with me, and we started monitoring, and all of a sudden, we realized his, breath, his respiration started dropping drastically. Then it was emergency crisis. Then it was crashing. Yeah, grab, a, grab some atropine. Yeah, I'm going to have to get him out of here because he's going to have It was just, you knew, and so it was just a moment there. We went, this is lost. Oftentimes, it's, we deal with long shot cases. And it still sucks. It still really is painful. Part of what we do in rescue and rehabilitation is we deal with a lot of hard cases and we deal with a lot of tragedy. We also get to do some really cool stuff. Tulsa Bent Knight up out of Casper, Wyoming, uh, fired up their equipment and realized that they had eggs on a conveyor belt. They shut everything down, shut down their entire Bent Knight plant and started making phone calls to try to figure out what to do. I spent 30 hours trying to do a nest site relocation. It eventually became apparent that parents weren't gonna come back to the nest. So we scooped up three eggs and transported them back to uh, the center. Hatching baby owlets. Uh, is nothing like a chicken. We have incubators that are designed to do raptors. And then we have warming units that we have them in and we can put them at different temperatures. Everything's humidity controlled, temperature controlled, oxygen controlled, and they grow like crazy. I mean, they double in size in 10 days. The whole intention is for us to rehabilitate these birds, get them ready to re-release back to the wild. So what we do is we don camouflage and face masks. Um, babies are always pointed out away from us. We pipe natural owl sounds, hooting owls we get from Cornell University to, to play, so they're being around the sounds. We also had the Wyoming Game and Fish uh, loaned us their educational owl, Jupiter. So Jupiter actually gets to spend time in front of the incubation unit. And so as they are starting to open their eyes, which happens around day, between day seven and 10, they're seeing another owl. So they are imprinting going, oh, I must be another owl. I sound like an owl. It looks like an owl. I am an owl. Our 
I came into rehabilitation uh, through the pursuit of the sport and art of falconry, uh, which is kind of like extreme bird watching, where you get to watch these birds do what they naturally do in the wild, and you just gotta be in close proximity to it is you know, just a really cool thing and really drove me uh, to further study of raptors. Um, and within that, started realizing that there's such a high mortality rate and that mortality rate was increasing uh, from you know, previous studies done to now. We're seeing that go up and uh, said, somebody's gotta do something. And there wasn't anyone locally to do anything. In fact, I mean, with only two, two locations in the entire state that even could take in a bird, uh, I said, well, I guess I'll do something then.